Welcome to CoreLogic's housing market update for October 2023. Utilising a fresh model upgrade, CoreLogic's National Home Value Index recorded a 0.8% rise in September as the recovery trend moved through an eighth consecutive month of growth. The rise takes the quarterly pace of growth to 2.2%, easing from a 3% gain in the June quarter. This slowdown in growth has occurred as advertised stock levels rise, helping to take some heat out of the market. The September quarter saw Adelaide recording the highest capital gain at 4.3%, followed by Brisbane at 3.9% and Perth at 3.6%. At the other end of the growth spectrum is Hobart, where values were down 0.2% over the quarter, taking the southern capital to a new cyclical low. The performance of the housing market in each city reflects the underlying supply dynamic. The three capitals recording the highest capital gain have each recorded advertised supply levels that are around 40% below their previous five-year average. Advertised supply levels across Hobart, where values are still trending lower, have been holding at above average levels since June of last year and were 41% above the previous five-year average. Since finding a trough in January, the National Index has recovered by 6.6% and home values remain 1.3% below the record highs recorded in April last year. At the current rate of growth, we're likely to see the National Home Value Index recover to a new nominal high by the end of November. We have already seen dwelling values record new record highs in Perth and Adelaide. Brisbane looks set to reach a new record high in October, while Hobart and Canberra have the furthest to go before staging a nominal recovery. Regional markets are continuing to lag the capital cities, with every rest of state region recording weaker growth conditions relative to the capital city counterpart over the September quarter. At a broad level, the combined regional markets recorded a 1.1% rise in dwelling values through the September quarter, which was less than half the gain across the combined capital city market at 2.5%. Softer housing conditions across regional Australia look to be more demand-driven, with the estimated number of home sales 6.5% lower than a year ago and 9.2% lower relative to the previous five-year average. In contrast, estimated sales volumes across the combined capitals were 1.9% higher than a year ago and 6.3% above the five-year average. The trend in advertised stock levels is a key influence on housing values, with the flow of new listings on an upwards trajectory since early June, bucking the normal seasonal trend where new listings are typically flat to falling through winter. As the number of freshly advertised properties increases, there's also been an upswing in the total number of homes advertised for sale. Although total capital city listings remain below last year's levels and less than the five-year average, there is a clear upswing in available supply. The rolling four-week count of total listings is almost 6% up from the low point in June. More listings imply more choice for buyers, and more choice means less urgency and more time to deliberate on the purchase price and negotiate with the vendor. The total listing trend remains diverse, with an above average number of homes on the market in Hobart, Canberra and in Melbourne. At the other extreme is Perth, where total advertised supply levels were 43.8% below the previous five-year average for this time of the year. After leading both the downturn and the recent upswing, Sydney's now recording a slowdown in the pace of growth. Dwelling values surged 5.2% through the March quarter, but the rate of growth is more than halved to 2.2% in the September quarter. The slowdown comes as advertised supply levels rise and affordability constraints become more apparent. Although listings are rising, stock levels are still below the five-year average and selling conditions favour buyers, with homes taking a median of 27 days to sell and discounting rates reducing to just 3.3%. Sydney dwelling values are still 3.1% below their record highs. Overall, Australia's housing recovery remains entrenched, with national dwelling values only 1.3% off their record highs. Capital city values are 7.4% higher over the first nine months of the year, and regional values are up 2.6%. With values likely to rise further over the coming months, more regions are set to post a nominal recovery in home values before the end of the year. Of the 87 SA4 regions nationally, 27 are already back to new record highs, and a further 16 are only 2% or less away from record highs. While some sectors of the economy will be applauding higher housing values as a sign of increased wealth, non-homeowners will be increasingly frustrated as affordability constraints worsen from both a purchasing and a rental perspective. 
CoreLogic's latest national affordability metrics to June this year show the ratio of dwelling values to household incomes and the time it takes to save for a deposit is once again rising as housing values increase faster than nominal incomes. The portion of household income dedicated to servicing a new mortgage is now approaching new record highs, as is the portion of income dedicated to paying rent on a new lease. The outlook for housing values remains positive, albeit with some risks of a slowdown. Advertised supply levels are arguably the most important facet of the market to watch over the coming months. An acceleration in the flow of new listings is a normal feature of the market through spring and early summer. However, if this trend continues, we are likely to see buyers benefiting from more choice, less urgency and greater leverage to negotiate. A lift in advertised supply isn't likely to be met with a material lift in purchasing activity until barriers to enter the housing market reduce. A rise in consumer sentiment, a drop in interest rates or an easing in credit constraints would all be factors supporting a rise in purchasing activity. However, we haven't seen any evidence of these events occurring. Households are still doing it tough amid high cost of living pressures and high interest rates. Although most borrowers have been exposed to the rate hiking cycle, we probably haven't seen the full impact just yet. Although mortgage arrears have been fairly contained to date, as some households draw down on or deplete their savings, it's logical we will see mortgage arrears rise further. Economic conditions are softer and labour markets are set to loosen further as businesses and households contend with high interest rates and a pullback in consumption. Despite the softer conditions, unemployment is forecast to remain well below the long run average. We don't see a material risk to mortgage default rates unless we see an unexpected rise in the jobless rate. A housing undersupply looks set to worsen before it gets any better. Apart from the early COVID dip, annual dwelling approvals haven't been this low since 2013. Against a backdrop of record population growth that's forecast to remain at above average levels over the next five years, we are yet to see any early signs of a supply response. Federal and state policy initiatives focused on incentivizing supply are well placed, but high construction costs and scarcity of trades remain a key challenge to deliver more housing supply. While an undersupply of housing is clearly a negative, insufficient levels of housing are likely to support housing values over the medium term. As always, there's plenty of trends to keep an eye on with regards to the housing market and factors influencing housing trends. You can stay up to date with all the latest news and insights at the research pages of corelogic.com.au.